In honor of Denver's decriminalization of magic mushrooms, doctors have read it what, if any, is your best story of patients on hallucinogenics. In a busy urban ed, one unkempt looking man with altered mental status sits calmly and tiredly in a bed along the wall in the hallway. As I walk by, he grabs me, with a worried look on his face, and says in the most classic stoner voice, Hey, man. Why does the time on that clock keep changing? Me, that's what it's supposed to do. Patient, who oh yeah. Laughs. Still one of my most memorable encounters. I can only imagine he's sitting there like hey time, could you chill for a minute? Can't it just be 3.52 for a while? What's the rush? Had a friend become impatient with mushrooms once. He took an eighth, and an hour later decided they weren't very strong. So the most logical thing to do would be eat his other eighth. Cut to two hours later, and he is parked on top of a parking garage. Tried to drive across town when they kicked in, and he immediately realized his mistake. He tried to wait it out, but after being abandoned by everyone else, I wasn't around. No way in hell would I have left the poor guy on 7 grams of shrooms to his own devices, and he decides he needs help. So he calls 911. While on the phone he wants to be as honest as possible, so he tells them about his .22 caliber rifle behind the seat of his truck. Only it comes out as, there's a gun in the car. He says he was tripping and sweating so badly, it was July. The next thing he remembers, is hearing a tink tink tink, and looking up to being surrounded by police, guns drawn and ready for anything. Friend isn't a danger though, so they get him in an ambulance, and give him charcoal to induce vomiting. The rest of the night is a blur for him, and he wakes up cuffed to the bed. They ask him if there's anyone he can call for a ride, and he tells them his mom is a nurse who works on the second floor. Apparently while tripping he kept telling them to go upstairs and get mom, so they all have a chuckle realizing his mom really was upstairs. Dude I couldn't tell you where my left hand was on 7 grams of shrooms much less my mother. If I ate 7 grams of shrooms I wouldn't even be able to grasp the concept of hands. I once ate 7 grams of mushrooms. It was all fun, until I got struck by lightning and was electrocuted. Turns out that my phone was on vibrate. Was working night shift on inpatient service. Ed called to admit someone. We've got a 17 year old down here with altered mental status. We think he needs to be admitted for evil slash monitoring. VSS. Chemical fine. Etc etc. Now. I'm not a pediatrician. I don't do kids. I don't understand why the ed is calling me. But, I'm an intern and it's 2 in the morning so arguing about it is stupid. I headed to the edition. I get there to see a young dude sitting there with his parents. I'll mention that his dad was a full bird colonel and very much fit the archetype, and his mom seemed to fit that type of personality too. The kid is literally rolling around in his bed, alternating between crying. Asking if he was going to die, rubbing his dad's hand, and telling him how much he loved him. I had to sit there and take a history with a straight face from a 17 year old who kept being distracted by just how much he loved his dad. I think my first question was, did you take anything, tonight? And he was straight up and said oh, yeah, like a shit ton of acid. Want any? I 100% laughed at this statement. His dad was not amused. The patient was discharged the next morning. I had a guy who was freaking out thinking he was going to die because he thought he had eaten too many hallucinogenic mushrooms. He went online and saw that sometimes patients are given activated charcoal to soak up the mushrooms in the stomach, not entirely true btw. So he goes outside and starts chowing down on charcoal briquettes that he has in his garage for grilling. After about a dozen he realizes holy cow I'm eating charcoal briquettes. Now he is really freaking out, so he grabs his dog, as the thinks he is never coming back to his house, and drives himself to the addition. He parks out front, walks into Tridge with the pup, black charcoal all over his face and hands, and says I need a doctor and someone to watch my dog when I die. That's actually really considerate of the dog, if he was worried that nobody else would show up to take care of it in time following his demise. Yeah, dog was a bro for driving him to the addition. I'm a paramedic, but this story is from back when I was an EMT, handholder, oxygen giver, bandage distributor. Got called at night for a teenage male who had ingested mushrooms. On the way to the call, my paramedic partner was unusually silent. After a while she pipes up, 
I don't get it. He ate mushrooms. Like, what, Portobellus? She grew up very sheltered in the country. So that's how this was gonna go. We get there, and the cops walk out a skinny kid wearing only boxes. Took some shrooms. First time ever. Freaked out and told his parents who called 911. My partner is spinning in circles and asking whether she should call poison control. I help the kid into the ambulance and onto the stretcher, turn the lights down low, and tell my partner just to drive to the hospital. The kid is calming down a bit, but he's tripping pretty hard. Asking if his parents are Jesus and stuff like that. This was before smartphones, when iPods were the thing. I had one of those radio transmitters you could plug into the iPod and then play music through the vehicle speakers. It had a remote that I carried on my belt along with a clicker for the ambulance. We were going to the hospital, lights down low, just being chill, when I remembered what my partner and I had been listening to a couple hours before, when we checked our equipment. Thievery Corporation. So I reached down and hit the remote without him noticing. A few seconds go by, and he turns to me with the widest eyes I've ever seen. Whoa. What? Is. This. Music? He was in true bliss. He kept asking me about the music for the rest of the ride. We dropped him off, and I wrote listen to Thievery Corporation on a sheet of paper, and tucked it into the waistband of his boxes. I like to think there's some dude out there from upstart New York who fell in love with Thievery in high school, but doesn't really know why. Nurse here used to work the night shift in a very small rural ed in North Carolina. We had a couple in their 20s get picked up the local police. They were found in their car stopped on the train tracks looking very lost and confused. They had somehow made it from Raleigh and were attempting to get to the beach. We don't know exactly when they decided to take the LSD. So they are brought into the ed for an evil before they are let go. This being rural NC, no one had a clue about how to handle this type of situation. We basically gave them forth fluids, put them on cardiac monitors, and tried not to stimulate them too much. They were extremely polite, and since I was the closest in age to them, and had some experience with recreational drugs, I did my best to engage them. As I was starting and forth on the male partner, I asked how he was feeling. Very safe, he replied. His pupils were as wide as saucers. I miss that job sometimes. I had a patient who had taken an ungodly amount of Benadryl in a failed suicide attempt. A lot of people think that, since it makes you drowsy, a bunch of it might be able to kill them in their sleep. Instead of killing them though, Benadryl basically gives you absolutely terrifying hallucinations for like 24 hours or more, and then leaves you with the worst multi-day hangover you have ever had in your life. He would not stop yelling and screaming about that damn cat poking its head out of the ceiling tiles every single time I left the room. He also had short bursts of thinking he was covered in bugs and I would find him stripped naked and yelling into the wall. Fing ceiling cat, he sees you every time. I'm a medic. Was working a concert in Chicago at Northerly Island a few years back for Fish Fest. Get a call for a male with his face in the ground. Find a shirtless 20 something year old with his pant undone and digging his face into the sand. I get next to the guy and tap his shoulder. Say sir, do you know what's going on? Are you okay? To which he responds in the most classic stoner voice, do you know what's going on, man? And digs his face back in the sand with the stoniest of smiles you can imagine. We coax him out of the sand pit, and he tells us he took 10. Just 10. Couldn't remember what of, just 10. And honestly 10 is bad number of anything. Lol 10 tabs of acid, 10 grams of weed, 10 grams of mushrooms, 10 shots. 10 heroines please. So we let him sit in the drunk tank with the rest of the trip targoons. God bless their trippy little hearts. I was a doctor that was on rotation in the emergency department 33 year old male who was brought in naked by the police under the influence of suspected mushroom ingestion. He had a bit of trouble understanding backquote why he'd been arrested despite being very aware of the fact that he'd been caught gallivanting around naked in the rain in a children's playground. The initial police response had been with two officers, and he told me with glee that they weren't able to grab him because he was backward slippery like an oiled pig in the rain, and the nakedness didn't help with no clothing for them to grab. Due to being unable to catch him, they called for dog squad backup. He recounted with a shit-eating grin how he'd hidden inside a giant puddle backquote like Rambo, and had thrown sticks and rocks 
to confuse the police dog. Following an hour or so, they gave up and reverted to using a search line of 12 police slowly advancing to find him. Eventually one stumbled into this goblin's little swamp puddle, and then they took another 15 minutes trying to catch him as he bolted naked around the children's playground, again. His only regret, despite his wife refusing to come and pick him up from the hospital, was that he hadn't eaten mushrooms. This is my favorite story here thanks. Thanks for watching. Slap subscribe.